when you draw a tenant on the end of something, you upset the end a little bit, and you draw, you cut down to your tenant like this, and you start to pull this metal out. As you do that, it forms a little fish mouth on the end. I like to take a mine, knock this edge off here first, then hot cut down here. When this thing starts folding around, starts moving around, I don't get quite as big a hole in the center. Now, upsetting, pushing metal back into itself. Okay. If your handle, uh, if, if your piece of metal, <coughs> let's say it's here. You hit it with the hammer right here. Okay, down here. If this hammer is too small, all you're going to do is mushroom out the edges of your metal, like ribbon. You want, you want to upset the metal. Say the metal back into itself. A lot of people take on their anvil, they take the hot part down here, and they hit it here. That means the weight, the, the, the force of this hammer to be absorbed all the way down before it gets to there, before the anvil is pushing back up against that. So if you turn your hot part up and hit here, most of your force is going to go in here and you'll upset your metal up faster. Okay? Now, sometimes if you're upset a big bar of metal, when you hit here, it's going to mushroom out, right? I don't want the mushroom out, do I? But I know if I hit it, it's going to mushroom out. So think backward. What would I do before I upset the piece of metal? That's right. So what I do is I take the piece of metal and I forge down my edges like this. So when I hit, I know that it'll move back here. It's like making that, that long, flat, or short, flat taper on the end of a bar. Okay? You know it's going to flare out. So you forge it down smaller first, so when you get to forging this out, it's going to spread out. You don't have to go back and do it. So I'm going to take on the end of my bar here, a severe right hammer stroke. I'm going to break these edges. These little points that stick out, you can hammer down this way, get the bar is long. Short this way, long and push it back in there to get rid of those four points. So I got that kind of tapered down there. Can you guys see that? Cut this. Right with that. Okay, for a chamfer starts. Okay. I'm taking very, very little amount of metal to the back So you can see it. But I have very, very small amount of metal cut off there. For a tenon, you probably want more. What I want to do is close to the end so you can see you don't need a whole lot of metal protection to form this tenon. An eighth of an inch, I'm going to be so close that my get for my tenon is going to be too small. So I have to cut down just a little bit and then start forming. Each time you um, squeeze into this from the side, each time you squeeze into this and this gets more and more and more and more. You're actually cutting into this a little bit here. This gets smaller and smaller. So I make sure you leave enough material and you don't take too much away. So then it pushes the metal out this way. All it is is a piece, an actual side set. He, he's got a fancy one there. Just that when I drive this into the metal, it drives the metal this way.
little groove there and just push the metal slightly this way. Okay, so we're going to take a little set I have here, which should be anything, just a little square head of hammer here.
not cleaning up the edges, I'm growing close to where I want to be. I thought back, oh wait, it's going to flare, so now I'm going to pre-fix that. I'm going to bring it in first. So now all I got to do is sit in here and pretty well done. Except, I can see myself, my taper starts about there. So that to me is a short taper. I have to go back in one more heat and get rid of that taper. So I know also, if I go to make this longer, it's going to flare out, right? So I'm going to come back here, shrink this down a little bit, and all I what I have here, I do not want to hear metal to metal if I'm changing the form. All I'm going to change is the shape. So I want to control. So I come up here, metal, metal to air. If you hit two times in the same spot with the scroll, you now have a flat spot. You're constantly moving either your damper or your head. So look at it like this. It's the same this way. This was a taper, a long flat taper. I changed the form. Then I changed that form into a shape. And that shape is a scroll shape. Does that make sense? You ever seen this is on, on the eight and act to a different note? But talk about scroll work. The scroll that comes from here, that's a half a turn, right? That's a full turn, right? Once you get to about three quarters of a turn, you can now pull that on a scroll again. When it goes another half a turn, this is kind of, it's called a balut. It's a mathematical scroll. The English said, we all make it tough. So we're all gonna go never pull a half turn on the scrolling I mean, a, a, a half turn here, you never pull a scrolling iron. You've got to prepare columns and holes, you will not pull a scrolling iron. And that's the way most Victorian scrolls are open as opposed to your more blue or your more Spanish Mediterranean scroll uh, spirals. Those are tough to do. You can't pull one jig anymore. 